Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to start the mods on the little WPL C14 truck. Last time we put the kit together to make the rolling chassis with the body. There wasn't any drama with the build, it went together very smoothly. The only mod during the build was to replace the self tappers holding the axles together with some M2 screws and nuts. Today we're going to do a bit of bodywork and fit the steering servo. I'd really like to get it running too, but I'm still waiting for the receiver, but we can get it close. Not too surprisingly, we're going to need to remove the body. There's four screws under the cab, two above the grille, and two halfway down the bonnet. Further back, there's two more that go through the cab and rear tray and into the roll bar. Take them out and the cab should just lift away. Next, the side steps can come off. Now, I suppose you could call them rock sliders, but I think they barely qualify. They're held on with two screws each, they come out and the steps can be removed. Now things get a bit more interesting. Since the interior bits were already fitted, this is the first time you've seen how they attach. It seems to be simple enough. At the front of the dash there's two screws to remove. With them out, the interior moves at the front, but it's still attached at the rear, where we find a clip. It's a little bit tricky to disengage, but it's quite doable without resorting to a flat bladed screwdriver. This gets us the interior out, but don't try and press the windows out at the same time, as they're still attached at the rear with some more screws. The window plastic is going to be a little bit delicate, bending it will probably crack it, so you need to be really careful. Take out the last two screws, and the windows will come out without any resistance. Interestingly, the back panel of the body can come out too. There's one more thing I want to do before taking it away for some paint. The side repeaters or running lights in the wings look really ugly. So I think to keep things simple, I'm just going to pull them out with some pliers. Now they're made of the same plastic as the windows, so they're all going to crack and fall apart really easily, making them fairly easy to destructively remove. The holes left behind are going to get filled with some regular P38 isopon filler and sanded smooth. I'm going for a matte finish, so there's not really any need to be really careful about it. There's a few more bits that are going to need some paint too. There's the wheels, including the spare. Now they're just held on with a single screw each. We might end up painting the battery box lid as well, but for now I think I'm going to leave it red and see how it looks. We will, however, have the spare wheel mount off for some paint. It's not all that visible, but I think it's going to look a little bit better in black. Here we go then, one painted mount a set of black wheels, and the cab in camo green with one wing black to try and look like a hastily replaced panel that never got painted. It's going to add a bit of contrast at the very least. There's a bunch of other body accessories to fit to. We've got the snorkel, wipers, door handles, and the mirrors on the part stream. We're going to trim those free and put them all to one side so they're all ready to fit. Something that's going to take a little while is gluing the tyres to the wheels. The glue is going to need quite a while to dry. First up, we're going to pull the tyres over the wheels. The mouldings on the whole are fairly good, but most of the tyres have one side that's a little bit better than the other. To stick them on, we're going to use some thin Sino, and we need to be really careful with this stuff as it's thin like water. If it spills, it's going to stick everything to everything else. All we do is peel back the tyre bead just a little bit and pop a couple of drops on the wheel. Give it a gentle massage to make sure it's all the way round, and you should end up being able to see traces of the Sino evenly all the way around the border between a tyre and wheel. We need to glue up the outside of all five wheels, then leave them for at least half an hour to be sure the glue joints won't fail while we're stretching the tyres to glue the insides. When they're all nice and dry, we can flip the wheels around and glue up the inside. It's the same method, peel back the tyre and drop in some Sino. By the time we finish up the body and we've installed the servo, the tyres should be ready to go. OK then, time to assemble the rest of the body. I've painted the wing mirrors with some Tamiya paint so they look a little bit more like mirrors. Just a couple of coats of X11 chrome silver. To attach the bits I'm using Zappa Gap, a medium sino that generally stays put and doesn't flow all over the place. Right now the holes in the body are a little bit tight to get the mounting posts of the accessories in. It's most likely just the thickness of the paint that's made the difference. So to clear all the holes, we're just going to run some drill bits through. There's a few different sizes, so to make sure we don't overdo the holes, we'll need to measure them first. We still want the post to be a friction fit, so to be safe, we'll start with one size down. Test fit, and if they still don't fit, go up a size. 
These old drill bits range from 1 to 6 millimeters in 0.1 millimeter increments. Very useful to have. Most of the holes are so close that we can actually spin the bit with our fingers to clear the paint out. We just need to be very careful not to slip and scratch the paint. To fit the parts, they just press into the holes and from the inside, we can pop a spot of Sino on the posts. Give the part a bit of a wiggle to spread the Sino around and wipe off the excess. What you don't want to do is apply the Sino to the hole, then press the part in. It would make it really easy to accidentally get the Sino running down the outside of the body, ruining the paint. All the bits fit to the body in the same way, except for the side steps of course, and we'll leave the wipers for now, just until we've got the windows and interior in. We'll fit the glass and interior after the servo, so the Sino has some time to dry. Right then, to get at the servo tray, we're going to need to remove the plate that covers it. There's just two self-tappers, and it lifts off. The servo that comes with the kit is a bit bigger than the high-tech HS65 we fitted to the B1, but I think it should still fit with some space to spare. But it's not a direct fit. We'll need to trim some of the plastic away for clearance. To make life easier, we will remove the tray from the chassis. It's only attached with four screws, and removing it will make it a lot easier to get the angles on it with the Dremel. First I've got rid of the webbing around the front post, so we've got plenty of clearance. It looks like it'll work best with the servo output near the stock hole. It doesn't quite fit, so there's still going to be a bit of trimming to do. OK, the servo fits now. It's a bit tight, but it goes in nicely. There's just one more thing to double check. With the tray and servo held in position, we want to check the servo output is somewhere near the same level as the steering drag link. It doesn't matter if it's a bit off, as long as it's fairly close, it will be good enough. Before we make everything permanent, I think it might be a good idea to make sure the cheapy servo actually works. We just need to connect it up to a servo tester to centre it, or we could of course connect it up to some radio gear with the trims all set to neutral. Pop a servo on so it's pointing straight down when the servo is mounted to the tray, and install the screw in the servo output to hold it all together. Well, the servo seems to be working okay. It's nice and quiet and not particularly quick. There's no notchiness or hesitation though, so I think it's going to do the job just fine. To fit it to the tray, I'm going to do the same as we did on the B1, hot glue. The usual warning applies. If you live somewhere really hot and leave the truck in a parked car, it will most likely fall apart. In the UK though, it never really gets hot enough, so the hot snot works very well. The best bit is, if we really wanted to, we can still remove the glue to swap the servo later. It would be a bit of a pain to do, but far from impossible. We want to make sure the glue is pretty much all the way around the servo and makes a fillet between the servo and a tray. Hold it firmly for a couple of minutes until the glue really starts to harden up, then leave it for another 10 minutes or so so it can reach room temperature and really hold things solid. Next the tray can get refitted to the chassis with its four self-tappers. And now you can see why we put the servo arm on first. Getting access to it now would be a bit tricky as there's quite a bit of plastic that's going to get in the way of the screw head. OK, now the servo's in, we can make up the linkage that goes between the servo arm and the hub. Since the method we used on the B1 worked just fine, we'll do something similar here using SLEC M2 ball ends. They're fairly cheap and should be available for most UK model shops that deal with model aircraft. Same with the rod itself. This one's also from SLEC, I believe. It's a 2mm rod with a threaded end. To start, we can thread one of the ball ends on the rod. We want to thread it on almost all the way, leaving a bit of space so we can adjust the length later if we need to. This will end up being the servo end. The other end is going to need a bit of surgery to the hub. Stock the hub has a boss that the stock linkage sits over. We'll need to trim it flush so we can replace it with the ball end. And the drag link is held on with a self-tapper, so we'll be replacing that with a long M2 screw, so we'll need to drill out the hole with a 2mm bit. Right. There's the hub ready to go. From the drag link side, we can install an M2 by 20 with a washer to stop the drag link from popping over the screw head. On the other side, we'll have another washer followed by the ball end and an M2 nut. Now a nylock nut would be ideal, but I've only got plain nuts left in stock at the moment, so they're gonna have to do the job. Just means that we'll need a little bit of thread lock once it's all squared away. Next, to keep the ball end somewhere near straight, we need to put a bend in the rod. The idea is to try and keep the ball end on the hub fairly parallel with the drag link when the suspension is at rest. At the moment, the rod is far too long, so we need to mark up where the ball end comes. 
Then hold the ball end up to the mark so we can accurately mark exactly how long the rod needs to be. To cut it, we'll just grind it through with a cutoff wheel in the Dremel. And while we're at it, grind some shallow slots in the rod at the same time so the glue has something to lock into. The servo arm is going to need one or two of its holes drilled out to two millimeters for another screw and nut. I think I ended up using the third hole out after a bit of experimentation. And this time I'm going to use an M2 by 12 and another plain nut. With all the bits in their final position and the servo centered, we can glue the rod to the ball end. We need to have it all ready, so once the glue's in, we can leave it alone while it hardens without worrying about something moving. I found having the tyres under the hubs kept everything in place very nicely. Mix up some 5 minute epoxy and using a cocktail stick thoroughly coat the inside of the ball end, giving it a good stoke to make sure it's well spread around. Pop the ball end on the end of the rod and twist and work it in and out until you've got all the air out. If you press it on and it stays put, then you're good to go. If it slides out by itself, you've still got some air trapped. Install the ball end over the screw on the hub and leave it until the epoxy has fully hardened. It's best to give it an hour or so just to make sure. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. We need to thread lock the nuts so they don't come loose, but we don't want to gum up the ball ends making the steering bind. The easiest technique is to install the nut and spin it on all the way. Get the end of a cocktail stick wet with some liquid thread lock and put a dab on the threads just above the nut. Undo the nut so it passes through the thread lock in the threads and re-tighten. The nut's only going to gather the thread lock it needs and not so much it runs down into the ball end. Simple but effective. Unfortunately we're not going to get the truck running today as I still haven't got the receiver as mentioned earlier but we can reassemble it and see how it looks. First we've got the wheels with all their screws, the bumper and the plate above the servo tray. We can pop the windows back into the cab now too, being very careful not to stress the plastic too much and crack them. Followed by the interior, making sure we carefully clip it all together at the back. The side steps go on next with their two screws each. We just need to watch out that we don't over tighten them and strip the soft plastic. Next the cab goes back on the chassis, rear first, and the remaining screws go back in now. There's six in total, the two at the back of the bonnet two that attach the grill to the front, and lastly the two that go in the back through the roll bar. And that's almost it, we just need to glue in the windscreen wipers with a tiny smear of zapper gap. We need very little of it. There's only one little issue, the wipers are straight and the windscreen's curved, so they do stand off a bit, but they're not too bad. And there we have it, from the outside at least it's all complete. Once the radio arrives we'll be able to give it a test run, then figure out how to install some lighting, which should be fun. I do think we're going to have to paint up the toolbox though, so that's going to be green the next time you see it. Overall, I'm quite pleased with how it's going together so far. As long as it runs as well as the B1, I think we're on to a winner. Well, that's about it for this week then, so as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you've got something to say, by all means leave a comment. Bye guys!